Okay, hello everybody for welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. And this is Brett, your host for Crypto Mastery. A pretty light uh, week in the markets here. We're going to go ahead and dive in. As always, if you're on live and you're in the Crypto Mastery group, uh, feel free to ask your questions. So um, let's take a look. Not much happening here. I'm going to turn out all the gray non movers. And so we've got Bitcoin up 0.61%. You know, I really think um, things are going to be kind of quiet until we get a breakout. And I think we're getting pretty close to a uh, breakout or breakdown. I, I'm favoring the long side. We'll look at that in a moment. So, and of course, the XRP uh, news is a non-news, non-event. Nothing happened really there. And um, the one thing that could really be a catalyst for these markets is the BlackRock news. But as every week, let's pull up the uh, news. And of course, there's BlackRock right in the headlines. How did I know? Let's see. And we've got uh, the, uh, we've got Gemini suing And uh, let's see, people saying Bitcoin will break 100,000. We've heard that before. But um, yeah, I think this run, we will I'll show you why. All right, let's see. Any questions, you guys? I want to make sure that you know one's waiting to get in the room. I'm going to move my uh, controls right over here. All right, so let's dive in. Uh, all right, so we've got Blue uh, Business Insider, rather. Here's Larry Fink of BlackRock. The big news. As we heard, it was the uh, BlackRock ETF being applied for. Uh, w when that gets approved, very likely that it will, markets are going to explode. And I, I think, again, you know, you hear me say, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. You know, we have a Bollinger Band that's tightening really tight here, and that usually always precedes a big move. So I think we're getting closer to some news that, you know, I feel strongly is some news that will push us higher. I believe it's higher. And um, so uh, cryptocurrencies could revolutionize finance, Larry Fink says. Well, what were they saying a couple of years ago? They were saying we're not getting involved in crypto. And really what they wanted to do is push prices down so they could accumulate. And there's a very interesting thread on this on Twitter. And uh, by a guy, the former founder of Prosper Trading, um, I believe it was Prosper, and uh, our, uh, his name is uh, Velez. I'm forgetting his first name, but I used to know him in the day trading days. And so pristine trading, that was it. <clears throat> Pardon me. He has a very interesting thread about how all the markets have been kind of manipulated by BlackRock to push prices down so they can accumulate. And I think they're realizing now they're not going back down lower. And our indicators are telling us that. They've been telling us that since January. And I've been telling you guys that. I think the bottom is in. So we'll see what happens. The question is, how long will it take for BlackRock to get approved? And uh, But here's the, I was kind of saying, the question he didn't answer is, why now, right? So now that they've been accumulating and they're positioned to get in front of the next big wave, realizing they can't push prices down lower, uh, won't say can't, but unlikely. So that's kind of the that headline in a nutshell. There, let's move on and see what else. Go to decrypt real quick. Grayscale cries foul over SEC approval of a different kind of Bitcoin ETF. So this is kind of new news for us. The company says difference between a leverage. Oh, that's not okay. So the leverage Bitcoin futures and ETF and the spot ETF they're different, and uh, it shouldn't be enough to stonewall the latter. The uh, futures backed. ETF for Bitcoin, however, is settled in cash, not Bitcoin. So that's a big reason why, you know, allegedly that was approved first. And that was right around the top of the market, as if I'm correct. And that's and then we saw that big drop. The spot ETF would mean that all the money flowing into a BlackRock ETF would mean that BlackRock would have to go out and essentially buy Bitcoin, pushing prices much higher. And that's what we're waiting for. And if, um, if BlackRock gets approved, then Fidelity likely would be a secondary candidate and uh, Coinbase is in there somewhere as the custodian. Now, you might be saying, well, the SEC, aren't they suing uh, Coinbase? And they are for unregistered securities. OK, but that's different than what we're talking about here. And being a custodian for Bitcoin essentially is a different uh, avenue. So that could be uh, approved and that would send the markets much higher while the other issues are sorted out over many years. So I'm just checking the participants here. I've got windows all around me, guys. So if you see me looking around, I am not rolling my eyes at you. Let me move this down here. Somebody said that recently on uh, my top screen. If I look up at it, it looks like I'm rolling my eyes. Definitely won't uh, do that to you guys. So um, looks like the regulators um, gave their blessing to a 2X volatility share. So this uh just june 23rd okay so this is interesting 
um, and sort of new. And this um, is the ETF leverage Bitcoin futures on June 23rd. So that's interesting. That'll help push things higher and at least allow us. The question is, can we can we as U.S. residents get on those? I'm assuming if it's an ETF. Well, I'm answering my own question as an exchange traded fund, which is regulated. If it's in the U.S., that would allow us everyday people to get in on at least some leverage trading as the SEC is going to war against these offshore and uh, any leverage trading platform. You know, they forced Kraken to get off of the uh, stop offering leverage uh, for the most part. I think they still have some 2x leverage tokens. But in terms of margin trading, uh, these are being gradually taken out. And we're seeing uh, KuCoin also getting, you know, uh, delisting a lot of coins. There's rumors about KuCoin's going to have some issues there with the SEC. And even though it's KYC free, you don't have to do KYC. It looks like these uh, opportunities are being slowly and systematically taken away for U.S. traders. But hopefully we're being a, we're able to add these. And of course, Gemini has launched their new, a, um, uh, their new offshore leverage trading platform. Now it's not available for U.S. Uh, customers, and, and certainly um, that's something to keep in mind. However, uh, VPNs sometimes will allow you to do that. So, so we have Grayscale here. The news was more bittersweet. So for Grayscale, the uh, one of the lawyers here representing Grayscale and uh, in this battle with the SEC argued that approving the volatility shares ETF, I guess that's what they'll call this, so we'll look that up, ran contrary to its own stance against fund dealing with spot markets. There's a lot to unpack here. I want to get to the chart sooner than later, but uh, this is here June 30th, pretty recent, two weeks ago. Grayscale suing the SEC after the spot Bitcoin ETF rejection. You know, it, it does put the SEC in an interesting spot where, uh, no pun intended, where the uh, if BlackRock gets approved for the spot ETF, all these other companies that were denied suddenly are going to have a case to sue the SEC and also get theirs approved. So that may delay the SEC approving uh, Black uh, BlackRock's applications for the short term, but we'll see, we'll see, and uh, we never know. So let's see, we've got this here, <clears throat> asset manager, SEC uh, scrutinizes SEC over denial of grace case. So that's the story. Uh, I think we don't need to. We'll keep an eye on it. But the uh, spot ETF, as you were saying, will open the door to new investors, Volatility Shares co-founder uh, states. So, you know, just in case that's not clear, a BlackRock ETF would allow everyday people to get into Bitcoin. I was reading a, a post recently from a big internet marketing uh, gu guru who said uh, he was being spoofed. And he said, guys, uh, I never asked for investment advice. I don't even know how to buy a Bitcoin if I wanted to. And that's those are the people that really that will open up the market and lead to not only mass adoption, but massive growth when the retail public starts wanting to get in and they can easily do it through Fidelity or through an ETF like BlackRock. So hopefully that's clear why that will open up a lot of opportunity, essentially also because it's, it's going to be regulated and supervised. Pardon me, guys, it was uh, traveling, got in late last night. The uh, Coinbase would be the, not the custodian, or I believe the custodian, but it will have spy powers to watch over everything and ensure everything was legit. So if that happens, then the pension funds and the big investment houses legally, uh, don't quote me, I'm not the legal final word, but that's the plan is that uh, they can um, get involved on this. I have to admit somebody to the room, in the waiting room. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, there you go. Welcome, everybody. So <clears throat> those just joining us. So essentially, that's the deal with BlackRock as uh, it'll turn off and make it easy for the the um, the newcomers. Let's just say every bull market brings a whole new wave of newcomers. Mary Homemaker hears from her neighbor, Bob, this thing about Bitcoin. Where do you buy it? You know, that's always been a bit of a challenge and kind of scary. And so, uh, you know, I think that this time, this market, we should at least break 100,000 and quite a bit higher is in the cards for next year. Uh, Kiyosaki had a post here this morning where I'll see if I can find it, uh, where he uh, is stating the, if something allegedly happening next month that uh, with the BRICS nations, and I say allegedly because there's some counter commentary that uh, India actually wants out of the BRICS deal, which would not lead to this. But Kiyosaki has said, and, and ignore my screen right here, this isn't the story. Uh, maybe we can uh, find this. Let me just look for that because it was interesting. 
uh, Rick's Twitter, see if I can find that post. Because what he's saying is, yeah, the Johannesburg. So something apparently happening next month in Johannesburg. Here it is. I was looking at this this morning. So August 22nd, almost a little over a month from now, suggesting that BRICS nations will announce the gold-backed crypto. U.S. dollar will die. Trillions of U.S. dollars rush home. Inflation through the roof by gold. Well, you know, Kiyosaki is a big gold bug and is heavily invested in gold mines. And so we want to keep that in mind with a grain of salt. So that potentially, I don't know, that could be a catalyst. We, in our uh, Moonstream Active Trader class tomorrow, we have that scenario where Bitcoin could go to 100,000 fairly quickly. I think the reasons have changed, but I think that path is still valid, uh, primarily with a with a BlackRock approval in the next few months. Not so much necessarily this in here, because one of the comments that I was reading this morning is that, uh, that um, yeah, India might uh, be wanting to get out of the BRICS deal. It's not a done deal. And also, uh, so what? That doesn't necessarily push uh, money into Bitcoin. So, you know, just worth noting that uh, some pretty smart people, although some people are saying Kiyosaki is, is kind of uh, had his day. I don't know, uh, but he he's a smart guy and I would pay attention to it. So we'll put that in the back of our minds and good to know about. All right, so we've covered that. Uh, let's see, Bitcoin to reach 50,000. You know, I've been showing that. We'll look at why that can happen. And I've been saying that for, I'd say, a month now. The path to 48K to 50K, that golden pocket Fibonacci retracement uh, is likely. I think we have to we have to get above 32K. Once we can, Bitcoin can get above 32K and hold, then I think we can push up fairly quickly there, not straight up, there'll be pullbacks, but that would be the next target I see and uh, based on some of our indicators. So um, I'm starting to see more people say this. Uh, I think I was one of the first to suggest that, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. So 100,000, these are pretty vague numbers. They're not giving any specifics as we'll look at here today. Um, but this 30,000 level has been really tricky for Bitcoin to get and stay above that $31,000 level. And that's a really important line in the sand, but but we could see a spike above 31K. We did. 32K is the number, and I'll show you why in the charts, which we're almost there too. So let's see. I have a Bloomberg saying Bitcoin set to quadruple by 120K by the end of 2024. Who is this by? Let's see. I mean, this is, again, it's a kind of big prediction by somebody on Standard Charter. I don't know who they are. So, you know, there's a lot of talking heads, new ones every day. And uh, that's uh, that, that's a pretty vague target. I think that um, I'm showing 105 to 155 or 150. And then we'll look at that here on a Fibonacci basis. So if you guys don't have any questions, we'll go ahead and dive in. Let's see. Is there anything else we want to look at? Bitcoin news. This is our class where we unpack the news and see if there's anything uh, anything else we need to look at? Uh, ETH over 1900. We'll look at all of these. These are a lot of these news feature. These news features are are um, looking to sell ads. See, Jim Rogers had the pleasure of seeing Jim Rogers speak live last month, uh, the week before the Bitcoin conference. Uh, big fan of Jim Rogers. And uh, let's see, he's saying Warren's U.S. is going to suffer as U.S. dollars value erodes. So um, it'll take time, though, and I think eventually that makes Bitcoin stronger. And let's see uh, some more some more non news that's kind of been on the radar for a while. OK, so let's let's go into the charts here. And so um, we've already kind of looked at uh, the what's moving. Not a lot moving. Solana's up a bit. Let's take a look at Solana. I did post that in the the Moonstream Active Trader group the other day. <clears throat> the chart looked good on Solana. And I suggested it would push higher in that group because we had a nice uh, rocket candles, one of our one of our uh, commonly used uh, patterns that we've noticed. And I'm going to go back to that uh, on the, the monthly here. That was interesting. So right here, yeah, about last week, this put candle here. What do we have? We have the 21 day crossing above the 50 day. This is a bullish pattern. Let's zoom out a bit on Solana and uh, just give that a look. Nice cup and handle pattern for me here, though. Honestly, I would wait to see, and I already have an alert set, as you can see, right above the $27 level. 
And that's a very significant level. If we draw this all the way back here, we can see, right? Let's just go full screen and uh, look at this a little bit closer. All the way back here, um, you know, Solana was one of our picks in our Moonstream service. August of 2021, I recommended buying at $35 on that pullback. So we were a little late to the party from the $1 and $3. However, if you'll remember, uh, I had a hell of a run back in this $31 range. And so again, I recommended uh, on the pullback right in here when that 21 day moving average, exponential moving average crossed the 50. That was the setup I was waiting for. And then it shot up higher, up over 657%. So the reason I mentioned that, what are we seeing? We're seeing that happen here again. Uh, it tried back in here, markets weren't ready. And so this level, the all important level, right around $26, $27, support, 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 support. And then it fell down and broke through support. And the analogy I like to use, it's like falling through the ice. You're falling through the hole in the ice. And the thicker the ice, the harder it is to break up back above the ice. And so the thicker is how long it's been underwater. That's sort of a loose analogy there. But uh, so here it became resistance once and twice and kind of three times. So that's the issue here. The other thing I'm watching for with Solana though, is it needs to come back up and at least retest that $27 level because otherwise tech, then we're seeing lower highs. We really want to see it coming up here with that support on the 21 and 50 day EMAs. And typically I like, I find that it's the third or fifth test that breaks through and that's been that way in uh, the stock market back in my day trading days so um i didn't do that very long tricky business but uh was doing a lot with swing trading and options so with this 27 dollar level that's why i have my alert here i don't want to be buying into prematurely positioned coins because this is going to be a bit of a struggle let's take a look at our crypto mastery uh, indicators and those of you that are new and just using these indicators that's the uh, big reason for these training classes. So uh, what we have here is we have a bearish ERI on Solana. And uh, <clears throat> the reason we're starting with Solana is because it's it's, it's had the uh, most movement today. And uh, I came right up to this resistance area though. So I would not be buying Solana here. Uh, either way, without our ERI, I would want to see it come back and test this crossover because this is now kind of like a trampoline jumping off the roof of the house under the trampoline this is where we'll likely bounce and break through so that'll be a scenario i'll be watching for and uh, actually i'm going to set another alert here at 24 dollars to get an early indication of is solana ready to go again uh, because that's one that we're not going to want to miss in the bull run coming in next year highly confident that that happens uh, of course nobody knows uh, we were saying that in 2021 also Right up until actually, I have a screenshot of in September 2021 where I was telling people in the Moonstream private group that uh, we should be getting into cash. And I was saying in November and December and pounding the table, get into cash in January. Those of you who were with us uh, or out of the markets, if you listened, uh, for more information about Moonstream M3 crypto, it's just moonstream.io slash M3. And uh, you can find out uh, more about that. So we'll talk a little bit where you can see that. I'll just show you that uh, URL. Not all of you, or some of you are watching the, these classes that are not yet in the program. And, uh, or if you want to upgrade from Crypto Mastery, we have daily chat and uh, videos on Wednesdays. So that's moonstream.io slash M3. All right, short little uh, uh, information there. So um, let's go back to Solana. What I'd like to see is the break above $24, at least touch on that. And then really riding these upwards trending EMAs. Uh, and so what I'm seeing though, however, on our indicators, bearish early reversal indicator overbought on the TSI. What we want to do, the ideal setup on these is a bullish ERI and then the TSI going from red to green and above that 20 line. This is our ideal setup trying to going into positions. We don't want to be buying up in here where it's already overbought and we want to catch it on the bounces. And then ideally also when this signal line starts to go green, fairly shallow though. See, see how it's just kind of going sideways. You can almost see a cup and handle on the signal line, which is not something we've noticed before. And then of course our trend indicator which uh, is the fourth usually fall in line. But uh, when they all align, these things can have powerful moves. We want to be buying on the bell signal. The key says, hey, a new trend may be forming. We want this midline green. If you're new to this uh, and uh, don't understand what it's all about, it is uh, it's a 
these were built by my business partner, Joe, who is a quant engineer and a trader and a programmer. And so uh, this is a lot of math and stuff, math and stuff. That's a technical word. And um, I don't really know how he's coordinated it, but it's a much, it's an excellent midterm to long-term trend indicator. When the bull market comes back in force, listen to me, when the bull market confirms and comes back in force, we want to be getting in on these first key and bell setups because often they'll repeat two and three and four times. And there's going to be huge moves in that when it happens. When will it happen? Don't know. But that's why we're watching for these. And the other nuance is when do you want to take profits is both on the first dollar sign, take some off the table. And then the bag of money is the other sign to take profits. We do recommend having a moon bag, 10 or 20% leave in that position up to you, but you really wanna be taking profits. And then look at that, waiting for a pullback. This a signal is very accurate for catching a pullback, waiting for the next bell. So this would have had us back in after taking some profits, buying in lower, heading up higher. So we will have tomorrow on Solana is a profit taking day. So again, what we don't want to be getting into these prematurely. Okay. So um, again, what I'd want to see on this, another thing we like to do is draw these trend channels and uh, catching them on the bounces off the bottom of these trend channels. So again, we're overbought. We want to see this pull back down on this range here. And then possibly that's a good bet for Solana. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. So any questions, you guys, let me just make sure I can see all of the chat. Here, I've got a bunch of windows here. I don't see anybody in the uh, chat asking questions. So if you do have questions, let me know. <clears throat> so we have crypto update. Top three altcoins to watch this week. Uh, Shiba, we're not going to talk about Shiba. Solana, here we go. Rising against crypto odds. Does it say why? Uh, record in 39% increase. Surge propelled. Or is this to, to exponential moving average? uh 200 day ema let's look at that so that should be on the chart polygon having a move and polygon recently moving onto the solana blockchain and uh i'm sorry yeah it's helium forgive me that's helium not uh not matic so solana their price hits key resistance like we've been sort of talking about on this last few minutes so um you know here's what we'll do real quick so on this chart let's get a 200 day ema and all i have to do is type in ema here on the uh the charts moving average exponential and that'll put a new one on there for us this blue line so just right click on that go to settings and come up under inputs change that to a 200 day we can make that a little bit thicker to see that yeah so that 200 day is is hitting as re uh, resistance there and I guess we can leave it as blue. Sure, why not? So do we see that? Yeah, let me turn off the other ones. The 21 and 50, uh, not showing us a whole lot there. Uh, the the green is a, a trend line. So let me turn off the ERI so you can see this. Look at that 200-day <clears throat> exponential moving average, right, as coming down, hitting as resistance. So that's, that's why we need to see it back up above $24. And, you know, and I think this does cycle down. We'll see profit taking in these areas. So it seems like a quiet day in the markets right now and not, not uh, uh, well, actually, before I say not a lot happening, let's take a look at our FOMC meeting schedule because July, we do have an FOMC later this month, July 25th, 26th. They've already basically said that they're going to raise rates uh, one more time. So that's being factored into the markets. So this week should be kind of quiet. All right, let's jump back over here. We've got our own watch list on the uh, crypto mastery side. So we've got Bitcoin. Let's hop over to Bitcoin and uh, see now Bitcoin is interesting. It is actually completing getting near a bottom of a cycle and uh, showing all green on the radar, by the way, which is uh, interesting. If we wanted to go longer term, tell you what, uh, I have a longer chart on this. So let's do this. This radar here is a four hour daily, weekly, monthly. I've been watching and changing these. One of the great things about the radar is you can go into settings under inputs and change that. And so for longer time frames, I actually like to go, oops, not one hour. I like to have it as a day and then a week and then a month. And then after that, you guessed it quarterly, which would be what? Three months. Okay. So let's take a look at that. And we're still all green. So guys pay attention right now. Uh, <clears throat> the reason we developed the radar, 
let's take a walk back in time here. December of 2021. I'm going to turn off the EMA here and we're just going to look at the chart here for a minute. Let me just do this. So back in uh, December of 2021, we were relaunching our Moonstream service. It was right in this area. And we uh, we had recommendations on some coins. One of them was E-Gold, E-G-L-D, Elron, and it shot up 159%. And uh, we were saying, I'm sorry, where was I? That was end of 2021, right in this region here. So put this, uh, this caught that we really caught this rally right in this September, October, uh, let's see, uh, December. It was in here somewhere. We did nail the top of the market otherwise, but we were getting in and we said that, hey guys, it's time to get out of these markets. And the reason was when we went back that we developed something, this radar so that people would know, when do I get out? Because we had people in huge, big profits on these coins like Elrond and uh, they were in profit and then what happened the markets dumped and so people's profits turned into losses and if they didn't sell out and uh and so the reason we created the radar the multi-time frame radar is i went to joe and i said what can we create that gives people an indication of the likely direction in multiple time formats and time frames so we developed this radar did a great job on it and sometimes you might see green or red on a daily but the weekly is different and that usually means if it's red on a daily, green on the weekly, it might mean it's going to pull back to a, an EMA support level and then flip green and then go higher. I like to see it all green in all time frames, And that's what we're, we've been waiting for because it's very bullish. And I do believe that this scenario here with this arrow is the more likely one because, because of this, that we're all green on our radar. Now, if we do go in a little further and zoom in on our uh, let's see on our indicators so we we don't have a bullish eri so we want to wait for the bullish early reversal indicator but we're seeing the tsi start to turn green here a bit the other thing i like to do on these and uh, i've seen play out and work very nicely is you know these higher lows on the tsi as well and um, let me just take a look at this are we seeing bullish divergence on there you know what i think we are you guys all right do you see that we uh so i am seeing let me turn these off down here because it's important we're seeing bullish divergence higher lows down in here whereas this was going down and then and then it went up and so this is an interesting pattern here i do see this as bullish divergence i think the markets right now based on what we're seeing here is bullish i think we do go higher and in some ways this is a bit of a cup and handle pattern here not really textbook the handle would want to be longer I'd like to see a shorter cup a longer handle but um it nevertheless worth noting but as I said we need to get above this all important say 31,500 it's really 32,000 which we can see if we zoom out a bit all the way back into this range right here so you see that former resistance right there that's what we need to get above and if we zoom out even more, when in doubt, zoom out, you can see that was prior support in this range of 31,000. But because that support was broken, turned to resistance there, that's why we're struggling in this 31K to 32K region. Uh, what's good here, though, is this head and shoulders pattern that was watching for uh, has, has broken. So this is another reason things are bullish right now in the mid to long term if we had come down and bounced and done this instead and ridden over here and dropped then that would have been that right shoulder so technically could this be a right shoulder not really because that it's the same height as the head so if you're not familiar with these patterns and uh, you'd like to get access to these we have a great uh, cheat sheet on high probability trading patterns that you can uh, get as part of our Moonstream service. Um, and by the way, if you don't have already the Crypto Mastery Trader Success Checklist, uh, let's see, Myrene, if you're on and could drop the link for where people can get that, this is a nice interactive um, cheat sheet that we created for people where you can select these various setups here. We want to see your trading score, your trading success score of at least four. So I like to see the ERI green, showing a green up arrow or multiple green up arrows. Also is the signal lined uh, with the TSI also gone green. The TSI is the trend strength indicator. 
uh, here above the 20 line signal line turn from red to green. Yes. Yeah, so those are th my three core that I really like to see. And then ideally we have that trend indicator turning into a bell with a mid green line. You know, alternatives could be bullish engulfing candles, candle body at support as price above the 21 day and 50 day price above a supporting trend line. These are all great reasons to add to your arsenal. And if you get anything of five or 10 over out of 19, these are high probability trade setups. Okay. And so let's see, we'll see if we can get that uh, link to you guys. Uh, if you don't have it, actually, if you'd like this, put a chat, just type in the chat and that way the team knows to get that link to you. I think many of you already have that and you're in the uh, pro one of the two programs. Now, if you're not already in crypto mastery, by the way, you can find out more about that. If you're watching on YouTube, you can go to crypto mastery.online and that'll take you here. It'll tell you more about these great indicators for $97 a month or $9.97 a year. And uh, these are included for free in the Moonstream course. So there's two ways to get access to these, but these are the best I've used in 25 years of trading hands down because we've created them to be that. And those of you that don't know the story yet, the TSI was an accidental, sorry, the ERI, the early reversal indicator was an accidental discovery that uh, led us to this great indicator, which was calling these macro bottoms and these longer term bottoms and tops. So really powerful early reversal indicator, hence the name that led to some of these other gains. This was Solana here that I mentioned, 657%. All right. All right, guys. Uh, I know you're not here for, for that necessarily, but I want to give you the tools for winning in these markets, especially if... Now, let's go to our different chart here. I'm going to open this up. This is my monthly chart. And again, all green on the radar on the multiple time frames. But look at this. On a monthly basis, we are back to green. So it's about halfway. It's about a third of the way through the month. And um, we things can change. Certainly, this green candle last month was actually red in pushing down. And I posted, it was last month, I said, guys, this can turn around. And I even had a dummy candle, which is in here somewhere, where I said, this could turn around. And I, our ideal setup would be this green candle like this with the tail, which is, is almost exactly what happened. I had wanted to see us close a little higher in the month. I would have been more bullish. But nevertheless, we still have a bullish engulfing candle here. And these have been have proven to play out more often than not. Okay, that's why it couldn't wouldn't show up. See that bullish engulfing candle. So this is bullish, you guys. We want to see, and if we can break above 32K, I have been predicting a rally here in late June, sorry, late July. Originally, I thought maybe it comes in early in June. Bob Lucas on Twitter was suggesting that maybe we see a skewed uh, in terms of the halving. Usually it's going right before the halving and into the halving goes up. And he was saying maybe we kind of get in early and it starts earlier in June. I thought possibly is, but I think it's July and then uh, we'll see that push higher. But we need to break through above that 32K level. Uh, once again, the reasons that I think we could go from there to 48K. Let me just pull this up here, which we've seen before in recent weeks is this golden pocket, this Fibonacci golden pocket. So if you are not familiar with how to draw these, uh, this is the Fibonacci there. I'll just redo it. The golden pocket is this 0.618 to 0.65. Some people draw it a little bit differently, but I like this here. So I'm going to draw it to the right here, all from the market cycle high to the market cycle bottom. And you see that right in this range which takes us to 48K to 50K. And I think if we can hit 48K, we'll probably hit 50K in this range. But this is that Bitcoin golden pocket zone. That's what I think is how it will happen. And here I've drawn this type of scenario, which uh, is, is fairly likely here. Okay. So zigzag up. Once we get above 32K, come back down, retest that as support. If you guys can see that and then push up here, the next Fibonacci area, that would be a 50% retracement right to around 41,000 give or take, you know, markets can do whatever they want. But I do think this puts us at, it's a rough estimation, puts us into August, uh, 48K, 50K, potentially. Uh, did I say August? October. Uh, wait, sorry. No, that would be August. Looking down August and then, you know, maybe spend some time and in going into the October, end of the year, probably see some sell-off from that 50K level. See these things retrace, you know, this upward trending channel, may also stay intact. And so if that were the case, we could redraw this a little bit there and still hit our numbers maybe a little bit longer out, September. So uh, so anyway, guys, if you want to screenshot that, 
uh, that is my uh, best guess here. You know, <clears throat> we need um, we need to get back above that 32k level there. So uh, you know, if we redraw this a bit and it skews out a little bit, but these things can these moves can happen fairly quickly. So you know, there we go. That's uh, what I'm suggesting we see happen fast rise on that potentially. All right, so always use stop losses, invest responsibly, and this is not financial advice. But um, I've been right a lot in the last two years, well, just reading the charts and having a good read on what else could affect things. And uh, the charts really tell the whole story, though. Even back with an FTX scandal broke, we uh, I was showing how was that a resistance level and likely to turn over. Obviously, didn't know anything about FTX, but these big moves and announcements do tend to be catalysts. And I'm not saying that conspiracy or uh, and the, that they're causal. The reality is when markets kind of stall at certain levels, it just, it, it allows more time for bad or good news to break. And so that's why it's uh, kind of like counting cards at the casino, you know, and uh, anyway, not, not to get too far into that. So this is a weekly basis. Let's look at our uh, indicators on this weekly basis. Uh, overbought on the TSI at this point. So again, uh, not a good time to enter. You know, I would like to see, and I would imagine we have a little bit of conflicting uh, information here. The four hour uh, and then the one day green and the weekly is bullish. Bit overbought on this TSI though. I love it when everything aligns on the longer time frames, but uh, we'll see what happens when we get to the daily, which we're moving toward. So I think we've unpacked that fairly well. Let's get down to a daily and then uh, we will look at uh, ETH, et cetera. And let's see, I have a crypto mastery list here. We can pull that up. So let's see, but look at that. I had this uh, green arrow here. I had pretty much drawn mm, weeks ago. And so we had this head and shoulders pattern that didn't really play out. And, uh, you know, it, it, it would, some could argue this was the right shoulder and this was a wider head, but it didn't play out. And so I think that we're, uh, this, this is the scenario that I had drawn when it came right up to this level. We'll see what happens with ETH, but also all green on the radar. So ETH looking good. Let's take a look at um, these indicators. Now, what we have is an, a bullish ERI on Ethereum. That's this green line. The easier way to read that, uh, as you know, as we turn it on this way, this was the this was the discovery that we made, and I saw the pattern in. But you don't need to know all of this stuff. We programmed it to print these nice arrows on the charts. So bear with me here. This green arrow, very bullish, early reversal indicator. When it aligns, when it aligns with the TSI, that's my trigger. I want to see both of those. Most times, or e either that or the other signals line up four or five on the success trader success worksheet. All right. So what we have here, though, the TSI is it's uh, it looks like it's trying to go green, but I would honestly rather see us complete the cycle, come down on these oversold levels before going green again. Uh, to be honest, but if we do bounce here, that shows money coming in, money flows coming into these markets. We unpack uh, those uh, money flows and MACD things on the longer time frames in tomorrow's class. Again, that's if you'd like to look at uh, more for a Moonstream Active Trader, that's where we have daily access to me in Signal Chat. And I do a weekly live class Wednesdays where we dive a little bit deeper into all this in the markets macro side. That's moonstream.io slash M3. If this goes green and starts breaking up higher though, and we have this ERI, then I'll really be watching the signal line, but that would be very bullish for me. And um, to get back into Ethereum, uh, when I say get back in, I sold half of my Ethereum back in this range here in my IRA. I'm not doing a whole lot of trading just yet until the markets start to push and really show signs of strength. But for the long-term coins like my IRA, I sold half and uh, waiting for a pullback here. So what I would suggest and what I'm not for you, but what I'm going to do is if we see a TSI go green and then I'll probably allocate a little bit more of my IRA back into ETH. And then if this goes green, then I'll add a little more. And then we trend indicator also gets a key and a bell. Then that's how I dollar cost average into these coins. Uh, if you'd like our dollar cost averaging Google Doc template, uh, just put in the chat that you'd like that and uh, we'll get that to you. That's usually reserved for our high-end um, coaching clients, but we recently made that available to some people. And that's a great way to dollar cost average into these markets. So let's see, uh, what else do we have here? So that's the daily on Ethereum. 
we can cop, come back over. We looked at Solana already, not much happening. Again, this resistance level here, it's overbought. You know, it's a good week to kind of sit on the sidelines, everyone, and uh, keep an eye on things. Uh, here we have Polygon Matic looking kind of interesting, however. So let's put all of the indicators away and see. So we're hitting resistance at what? At the 50-day EMA. So, and probably overbought. Yeah, so it's overbought on the TSI here. You don't want to be chasing these things. Markets are cyclical, as we know. We want to be catching the swings, optimally catching the swings on these bounces out of the oversold regions when they start to turn green and break that 20 level, just so that's clear. And uh, since we have a little time too, we can we can pull up some of our other indicators, give us some other clues, maybe even on the shorter time frames like our vol index. But uh, anyway, that's the importance of this indicator here. And uh, and also, most importantly, too, getting above the 50-day EMA. I want to see it get up and close above this. The last time that Polygon got above where the 21-day crossed the 50, we can get a little bit earlier indication here from the price action getting above the 50-day. So let me, let's do this because this is fun to do also. Let's get out of the full screen mode and we'll get a bars pattern. The last time we saw that back right in here, kind of similar where we are right now. You see how this push pushed up from the 21 day. And once it got to the 50 day, we saw this kind of a pattern here. So I want to make sure I draw this in a similar way. But um, I'm going to leave that on here. This this could be what we see next. We push up above the 50, retest, and then we get polygon kind of pushing higher it's a little bit risky because the the delisting and the uh on the, from exchanges and uh, the sec of course suing um not suing but uh saying that these are securities but you we could see a little 82 percent rise here give or take I, i'm more interested in the pattern itself playing out so don't get married to the uh, price you know we could see probably maybe something like this where this area is a resistance zone but um if you follow the wyckoff patterns you know we're at a point where institutions and bigger players probably going to start accumulating here now we were watching this by the way all through here we caught this cup and handle breakout it was short-lived you know but here's the here's the positive thing to keep in mind is that the market lows were in here for polygon and it's a higher low technically that was a year ago so we've put in a higher low. So the macro structure is very good on Polygon. If we go out to a weekly, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, monthly, we could. It's uh, it's It has been around that long. So that's more of what I'm looking at here. And even a two-day will smooth that a bit. So we want to watch this and wait for it to get above that 21 and 50-day EMA. What can we do? So we can set an alert. Let's uh, let's do that. I'm going to set an alert here on Polygon. I'll put it right in here because I think that'll be 0.75. That will indicate that uh, we're seeing some strength in Polygon Matic. Also one of our picks in the Moonstream newsletter, by the way, that was um, July of 2021. We recommended Polygon, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that was right back in here and had that nice run up to the market cycle top. Uh, however, you know, like many people, we, you know, I was saying to get out of the markets back in here and pounding the table right in there, uh, but we did not have the radar yet. So do you see how this is mixed? We have daily, weekly bullish, the monthly three months, not bullish. So that's the way to read those is basically say, all right, well, for the day and the week, we could push up here and then maybe come back down again and then wait for these to slowly catch up. That's how you read you read the multiple time frames. But when they're all green, like we're seeing on Bitcoin, what did we have on the radar on Ethereum? I want to pay attention to that. We're all green on Ethereum as well. I think I'm, you know, I've learned to trust these indicators. And uh, so that's what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm feeling bullish on the overall market. All right, so are there any coins you guys want to look at uh, yourself? I can answer Q&A while I'm here. We could even pull up the uh, screener and see what else is moving in these markets. So let's go ahead and do the crypto pairs screener. Uh, actually, before we do that, I said we would pull up some of the other indicators that we have. Let's jump over to a shorter time frame. Um, don't have that. We'll go to a four hour on Bitcoin. Okay. And uh, we can add in 
the our volatility index, which is one of our uh, scripts here. When you do get in here, by the way, you want to choose them as favorites. That way they're easier to find. And uh, so what we have here on some of these, the indicator, I've got a lot more than you guys because we play around with experimental ones. So don't think you're missing anything that we, uh, the best ones are the ones you guys have. So I'm looking for is the volatility index, which is great for the shorter time frames like the four hour. And we can even put on the dynamic candles. I guess we don't really need that one right now. If you want to look at uh, candlesticks on your charts, that's what that does. Okay. Uh, and the E to ATR is what I was looking for. That's what I was uh, sort of stumbling over. I've got way too many things on here. Unfortunately, in uh, trading view, you can't remove these indicators once you have them. So um, hopefully they'll come out with a way to do that. So let me turn off the ATR. What I'm going to do is show you how to use the candlesticks. So do you see how down below here where you can see uh, these spots and it says bullish harami, et cetera. If you want to drag those up onto the chart, just click and drag. Then you have a dynamic candlestick screener. If you're new to candlesticks, uh, that's how you can uh, learn these better and you can actually toggle these on and off. So if we go full screen and uh, the other thing you want to do if you're doing it that way, do you see how these indicators are sort of on their own levels? And if you drew, if you resize here, it doesn't resize on the other side. All you have to do is right click on the index, the axes for the left side, which is really for these. Because if I do this, then you see these move. Okay. All you do is right click on those, go down here to merge all scales into one onto the right. Boom. And then what you see, these are right on top of the candlesticks and then they move together. Isn't that cool? So uh, I know these the candlesticks changed colors real quick. I'll show you why that is. And that's the volatility index. Uh, the reason for that is so you don't need to have the vol index up. You can see it in the outline of the candles. I like to visualize it down below. I'm going to close that just so you can see the dynamic candles just on the uh, the chart itself as you're used to seeing those. So what do we have here? We have Bitcoin, as I mentioned. I think I mentioned. No, I didn't mention it here. What do we have here, you guys? It says it right there. Anybody? Nice bullish engulfing candle right there. Very nice. Okay. So, um, you know, I don't follow a lot of these. Like the Harami uh, to me is not something I really care about. Mostly I'm looking for dojis and engulfing candles. So what can we do? You can right click on this under settings, come down here and uh, you can turn on and off any of these you don't want to see. So the dojis I like, but I don't like this color. So why don't we say typically a doji is like a reversal pattern. So I'm going to do that and change those to red. And uh, then down below, I'm going to actually hammers are great too. I like hammers. I'll make those green. You guys can do whatever you want on these. And uh, then I turn this do this again. We can turn on and off things you don't want to see. So I have dojis. Evening stars don't need I don't really follow those. Uh, you do see multiple entries here also because one is the indicator itself. Description one is the color of it. Hammers. Yes. Inverted hammers. Yes. Uh, and uh, inverted hammers is a bearish sign typically. So I would actually maybe put that one as a dark, deep red. So the Haramis, I don't really use the Haramis. Turn those off. So, but the, the engulfing candles, yeah. So bearish engulfing might say, let's go red. So this is how you can customize these and then save this as, as default is what I'll show you as well. So we got bearish, uh, bullish engulfing and going green and then piercing lines, all their other stuff. I don't really need this on here. The kickers are cool, but know we have our other indicators that we need, There's, but you can see just a lot of options. So what we want to do now is go under defaults and choose save as default down here, save as default. So the next time we add it, these will show up. So now we have pretty cool, right? We have bullish engulfing candles. Now I see this is still blue. I don't know why that's showing showing as blue. Maybe I missed one bullish engulfing, bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing. I'll turn those back on and uh, I have to talk to Joe. Maybe the labels are something I'm doing wrong, but uh, again, I'll save as default. And at any rate, so, so what we have here, bullish engulfing candle there, bullish pushed up higher. Now, I want to share also the way what we use for getting out of these markets, these Bollinger Bands, three standard deviation Bollinger Bands. Invariably, when they get up above that, 
what happens? It pulled back. So here we pushed up above the Bollinger Band, clear indication time to sell. Then we had the Doji, which pulled back, dropped down here. I'm surprised this doesn't say bearish engulfing candle. Do I have bearish engulfing turned off? Some of these, uh, what's going on here? Uh, I have it on here twice. That's what happened there, I think. Um, candlestick scanner is what this one's called. You know what? I think I have the wrong one in here. Um, you guys, yours, but you get the idea. Yours works a little bit better. Yours is a newer version. So the bullish engulfing candle there. What I really am looking for, honestly, are bearish and uh, bullish and bearish engulfing, but mostly the bullish side because right in here, bullish signal right there works on a weekly and all time frames. So that's cool as well. Is that right? So do we have any on here? Those are less common on these. So here we have a bullish engulfing on the weekly basis. Sure enough, that pushed up higher quite a bit back up to those old market cycle high retests. Do you want to be watching for these? And uh, so let's move on and I'll turn that off for you guys there. Let's take a look at the uh, average true range and then I'll pull back uh, the volatility index. Now I like the, uh, the average true range on these shorter time frames like a, a four hour so and even a one hour so this has really been going flat for quite a while right we've been hovering in this 31 32 000 range haven't gotten close to 32k yet but i like catching the inversion here the flips right down here where it went from exit to entry okay on the four hour chart we can move to an, a one hour chart as well Let's see a big again sideways 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 this is most valuable at sort of a, a either extended uptrend or extended downtrend you can also use these on the 15 minute charts so you can ignore the radar for now if you're a short-term trader these are great for catching these uh, short-term swings so on the 15 minute chart you know you could have caught it right down in here the yellow candle means that's that uh, about to change and it looks like we'll, we should push higher here on bitcoin at least um you know, for a portion of the day, I always like to check the news for new headlines and see. Um, yeah, so Bitcoin exchanges, there's two important things to, to understand here, though, by the way. One is, and this is not the headline, one is that they we finally have a million Bitcoin wallets. So that's the first time there have been a million Bitcoin wallets. That shows mass adoption. So things are slowly and steadily moving in the right direction. This says Bitcoin exchanges now hold the same BTC supply share as late in 2017. So uh, that uh, generally means when Bitcoin goes onto the exchanges, people are potentially ready to sell. When they start pulling it off of exchanges into hard wallets, they're feeling more bullish and long term. Uh, but the the third indication that is important as well as uh, so if you look where we were a year ago, and uh, typically every bull market has kicked off when the the monthly price and um, the weekly price, daily price is above the same point a year ago. And so we are actually uh, at that point now, if we look at that a year ago, I'll get off the 15 minute chart and we can look at that. The other news thing that I just saw, Bitcoin ETF, of course, they're probably talking about BlackRock, but all uh, right, regulatory pressure, overall pessimism. Let's see, stay enthusiastic about the next few years and decades are about to bring for crypto. Yeah, we want to keep that long-term view. And with Crypto Mastery and the indicators, we can trade in and out of these macro trends. And that gives us an edge. It gives us an edge. We've been really fine-tuning this over the last two years as well. So highly confident uh, that we are right, that the bottom is in. And uh, we could take a look at the monthly on those indicators as well. I do want to touch on that. But um, yeah, so the highly anticipated spot Bitcoin ETF uh, should still happen. But in going into the halving, we've already talked about this. All right, we've already talked about this, you guys. I thought there might be something new. <clears throat> However, let's jump back over and uh, turn on our volatility index. But primarily, this is a class for teaching how to use these indicators, the volatility index. And by the way, uh, yours, these should always say my trading scripts. That is uh, the other programmer, the name Joe's company here. Uh, but I clicked on the wrong place, didn't I? That's not what I wanted to do. 
uh, wanted to come in here and click on the indicator, not the link. Now, that's what you want to do. So now what we have is, and I'll slow down a bit, on the volatility index, let's go to a one hour. I like this a lot on the one hour and four hour chart, especially when they're side by side. And uh, if you'd like to see how to do that, we can, uh, let me do this here. We'll do a different view, just pop up under this area and go side by side like that, two and two. So now what you'll have, now what you want to do here is have the symbol be the same, but not the interval. Okay, so now this can be a four hour, this can be a one hour. So we have, all right. So in this case, we have two Bollinger Bands on here. Let me turn off some of the noise. We have our Vol Index on this one. Uh, looks like I'll need to re-add it over here. That's fine. I don't need the trend indicator. Trend indicator is more for longer time frame. So on this, we'll come back up under indicators. And again, volatility index. And again, you can move these up and down with these little arrows. So there we go. So what are we looking for here? I'll clean up this chart just a bit. And here's that. I want to get rid of that. The, the standard Bollinger Band is a 2.0. We don't want that one. We want our 3.0. Uh, I've got my colors wrong. That is standard deviation 2.0. Yeah, I really don't want the 2.0 on there. I want the 3.0. And um, great. So there we have it. So ERI, let's turn that off. I just want to look at... Uh, the um, trend, uh, the volatility index. So here, do you see when these, so this is just to get right to it. When the volatility index comes down and it is in the oversold zone, down below in this red area, and then comes back up above 20, then it highly likely to continue on to the upper area. And uh, in this case, we then saw it pull off when it also breaks down below 80s, highly likely it's topped out. So has this played out well over the last uh, few few months? We can see on this four hour chart, sure enough, we had a TSI, we might've had an ERI, but let's just focus on the vol index. The TSI went from red to green above 20. We had the TSI also right in there, breaking about above that 20 line. They, they look similar, but they're very different. So when they align, it's high probability you're about to go higher. And uh, so we saw that right in here. We saw that kind of in this range here wasn't as strong. And we're kind of waiting. Not much. Their signals aren't really telling us much on this four hour right in here. But uh, but that's the way to watch it. Also, if you want to create the templates out of the indicators here, I'm going to save this like that. And uh, this is going to be my uh, four hour cm layout with vol index okay so that's how you can uh, load these up really quickly so what i'll say is i'll say tsi and vol index okay so with that you can if you were to turn these off by any chance or reload a chart you can come up under the uh, different layouts and that's these are these four things here. And uh, I also already had it in there as one hour, four hours. So you can see I have an older one here. So boom, pretty similar. I can take off the signal. But if I wanted to load the one we just saved, that's going to be see uh layout right here. See that? So there we have the one we just saved. Okay, quick and fast if you want to jump back between various layouts. Okay, so so that's how uh, that's the vol index and the dynamic average true range. Since we're coming right up on the hour, we can take a quick look at a crypto pair screener. Uh, once again, if you're watching the replay on uh, YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel if you like what you're seeing. If you're not already a member of Crypto Mastery, you can find out more at CryptoMastery.online. And uh, that you can see right there. And then if you'd like access to our more in-depth training, Moonstream, that is at moonstream.io slash M3 with daily access to me and Signal. And also you get the indicators included in the program and you get quite a bit more members area and other perks and things, including a portfolio tracker and other bonuses you can read about in the uh, 
in the uh, website here at moonstream.io slash m3. And you can go and watch that uh, if you like. And some other user reviews here, people that are liking and using the indicators in the classes. So um, I did promise we'll go into the screener here real quick. Where is that? Uh, and if you do have any questions, let me know. Uh, let's see. We come over to the crypto pair screen. I don't think there's much going on, though, or we would have seen that in the watch lists. But since I said we would, the crypto pair screener here, for some reason, it's not loading. There we go. So, uh, you know, you'll, you can see some of these with strong buys, and a lot of these are kind of uh, pump and dumps here with the, the higher ones. What I do like to do is kind of skim through what's in here and then turn off using filters a lot of the noise here that we're not going to really look at. So why don't we do this? Uh, we can turn off the exchanges. Instead of any exchange, we'll just kind of limit it to a Coinbase, which has most of them. And, uh, you know, you can do Gemini as well. If you're US-based, you can choose the ones that you like. And that'll narrow it down a little bit. And uh, so if we want to look at the technical ratings, just sort by that. And we have strong buys on quick. I'm not familiar with this. Let's have a look on that. This is on a weekly quick swap, of course. Yeah, I'm familiar with this. So, you know, what you can use this for as creating alerts. This is one to put on the radar. So why don't we do that? I'll hit add alert to, I'll add an alert and then I'll add it to our lists. Let's see, that was strange. The alert, uh, yeah, it's had 841. I want it at 125. Why 125? That would be above the 50-day moving average, kind of in this range. And then I'm going to add this to our watch list here, the Crypto Mastery watch list. We'll keep an eye on it next time. So um, if it's not quite ready yet, we can use our indicators. Actually, you know, that's why it's important not to be too fast. You can move quickly on these once you get used to it. But what do we have here? We have an ERI and we have the TSI. So, you know, you really try not to let your, your head get in the way of all these things. You know, I will uh, qualify and then disqualify these things as much as I can. But my favorite setups are the ERI, TSI. Now, had we watched this yesterday, it would have been a good signal to get into this. Uh, we're a little bit behind, but this still could have some legs in it. We're getting a key, and we do have this turning green on the, the signal line. It's a bit high and a bit overextended here, but we're getting a key and a bell. This is very interesting. So quick swap showing some interesting activity. We want to possibly look at that, and this is going to be on Coinbase. But again, I want to see this actually... I want to wait this long. I want to see if we can get above 95, 96. More than likely, though, this probably hits some rejection resistance here. I wouldn't buy uh, right there. But look at that great double bottom on the ERI, right? So that's why it's good to kind of be rebuilding your watch list as you go. What else do we have? Let's take a quick look at these, see if we can put any other gems on our huge volume on that, by the way, for daily. Uh, we've got uh, AGA. Um, interesting chart, you guys. Yeah, I think we need to be doing more of this because same kind of thing. This is on a weekly basis. Weekly basis, getting up above the 21 week, pushing up above the weekly time frame. What do our indicators show? Oh, uh, show that we should have been in last week or so. That double bottom uh, in your checklist, by the way, on the crypto mastery checklist. You know, if you're watching YouTube, you can put the in the comments. We can get you that link uh, or put it in the description to download that but when we in the advanced setups here let me jump over to that uh right where is that so the advanced setups if you get multiple signals like here advanced setups like a double bottom eri and uh, ideally if they are higher lows on the tsi i'm sorry the eri swings what i mean by that specifically get over to that and I'll turn this back on uh, yeah, so let me open that wide up. This doesn't really apply. And what I meant was these, uh, the lower, this is what I meant on the ERI, a little bit higher low. Okay. And then we had the ERI there. So that would have been, as we saw, an ideal time to get in, but still a double bottoming on the ERI is, is a good sign. I just a little concerned. It's, it's getting an overbought territory on this. And I'm not familiar with the project. Uh, let's add it to. Uh, let's see, I don't need an alert necessarily. Well, you know, let's keep an eye on it. If it breaks above this local high again, right in this region, what do we see? 
these are going to be the ideal times to get in the market. When they start breaking up above and testing former resistance, support resistance levels. So this is a great area. I want to know when we get back up above or get above the um, uh, crossing up over, what did I say, uh, this uh, 86 level. Well, let's call it 85, get a little bit ahead of it, put it on our radar. Okay. And then just sort of set by question mark. So when the alert goes off, you know, to pull it up. And um, that's interesting. What's the volumes down, but it's up a bit. So yeah, here's the problem with these. See this low volume. I know it's so hard to keep track of all the different things we have to pay attention to. Is that right? So, you know, with these low volume projects, be careful though, because volume has been going down. And so, you, you know, you can certainly see some big moves, but it may be hard to get in and out of these. All right. What else do we have here? We've got PAX, I believe. What is PAX? It's uh, Paxos. Okay. Yeah, I'm familiar with Paxos. Uh, it's it's pretty much a stable coin. This is going sideways. Um, ALG, we talked about Comp BTC. That's uh, compound versus BTC. Nothing really to see there. Ave. Uh, what is Ave looking like? Nothing really to see there. So sometimes it's also useful to see pullbacks on these. We see Solana as a strong buy as well. The Ave against the Euro as a strong buy. I don't see it. Our radar is, is not saying strong buy. It's a half and half. So really, we've already found the one to watch here. Solana is issued as a buy on Gemini and uh, certainly one to watch. All green on the radar. We've got Bitcoin in the list. And now Bitcoin has changed a bit from this morning when we started. Hmm, Bitcoin Tether, that's a bit of suspect that we're still all green on uh, Bitcoin on Binance now. Binance has had some different pricing. Yesterday, we noticed Binance uh, price on Ethereum was quite a bit different than uh, it was on other exchanges. Looks like they got that resolved and it was a, a data issue. Look at Stellar Lumens here. You know, a lot of these are trying to set up. I'm going to leave you with this, you guys, because we're out of time. Uh, when we can get back above the 50-day EMA, for the first time in a while, we can see explosive moves. So it's a good time right now to start setting your alerts on these. So right here, where do I want to have an alert above this local top? Right in this range. So price, if it gets right up in here, let's say above this 11.5. Uh, let's see, let me modify it. That's fine. It's good enough. Right into this, this wick. So this wick pushed up above it and then sold off. We want to see when it come back in here. You know what? I'm going to move it right above that wick. Okay. And uh, that would be a signal of us coming in. Now, there are other indicators. Uh, let me finish that thought. A signal that we're starting to turn the corner and potentially seeing this kind of rise. When we when it gets, when you get price gets above the 21 and 50, and it consolidates, and then we get ERI, and the 21 day just launches off of this. This is almost the rocket on the launch pad indicator. It doesn't quite qualify. That's one of our favorite indicators in the Moonstream program that so oh, classes tomorrow. But uh, look at this thing. This rocket took off from the launch pad and just shot all the way up here. These are those moves, everybody, that we want to be ready for and waiting, like a panther in the bushes for the kill. That was an 87X, you guys. So this uh, is what we want to watch for. XLM, let's keep an eye on that on the watch list, putting it into the Crypto Mastery watch list. And you guys might want to do that too. All right, everybody, I don't see any questions here. That's all we have time for here today. Hope you enjoyed the class here. And again, uh, if you're watching the replay or you're watching on YouTube, you can find out more at CryptoMastery.online. You can join us there for these weekly classes and these amazing indicators for $97 a month or $9.97 for the year. Get two months free. There's a quarterly option as well. If you'd like to get these indicators for free, included in more training like this and daily access to me, plus a lot more like creating members area training videos, go to moonstream.io slash M3. And you can read more about that here. So just a quick look at what that means. All of it's here. Again, lots of successful feedback. Uh, and um, you also get some other bonuses here, including access to our private Facebook group for a period of time. A blockchain bottom line online training, which is 100 lessons on how to trade crypto. So great for beginners. 
and you also get uh, various other things here you can read about. Don't want to make this a long commercial, you guys, but uh, we're here to help you win in crypto. If you like what you saw today, please like the video, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. See you again next week. Take care, everyone.